All right, the best leg exercise pair. So what are we looking for? All right, gotta make some definitions first. What do I mean by the best leg exercise pair? The main goal is hypertrophy. All right, the most leg development, the most meat on those juicy legs. So what we're looking for is the best hypertrophy combination out of all possible leg exercises. That being said, strength is second. No, strength is not the priority. Your leg mass is the priority. That is what is important here. And so therefore we need two exercises that can fulfill this goal. Two exercises only to get you the most mass. Pack on the most mass onto those legs. But we also want to have other advantages, such as convenience. You know, like At least for me, easy usage of equipment is perfect. Like when I say an exercise pair, they should be easy to superset. Like one right after the other. It should be relatively easy to do. So in terms of equipment, you know, you shouldn't, at least in my opinion, you shouldn't like <clears throat> require that much more equipment for the second exercise than the first exercise. In addition, they kind of have to be able to be done on the same day. Otherwise, it's not really a pair. It's just like, oh, I'm doing exercise one on like Monday and then, oh, I'll do exercise two on Tuesday. Like, yeah, yeah, that's still a pair, right? No, it's no pair. That is not a pair. So if it's all lower body exercises, it's going to stress the lower back. So we're going to need a balance. So we're going to need to balance the actual loading with the loading on the lower back. And thirdly, this pair is really for beginners and intermediates. Because as an advanced trainee, you already know it works. You, know, you don't need me to tell you like, oh, you know, you should try this and then do it with this. Like, you already know. Right? So just, you know, you're probably watching this for entertainment or something. Or to just confirm your existing beliefs. But if you are a beginner or an intermediate, this will be useful for you. Beginner especially. Intermediate, if you're like still experimenting or if you're new to like leg training, this will for sure help you. So what are they? No one's, no one's going to be surprised about the first one. The squat. All right. The squat, hands down. The squat is the king of leg hypertrophy, leg development, lower body development in total. Just, there is no argument. The squat is king because it has the most lower body activation and therefore stimulation. It uses your glutes, your quads, your hamstrings. All right, those are the three biggest, juiciest parts of your lower body, and it uses them all. Unfortunately, not really calves, but we're looking for the most growth in totality for the lower body. And even if the second exercise doesn't target the calves, that's fine. But the thing is with squats, it's primarily quad dominant, right, unless depending on your leverages, but like traditionally the squat is a quad and glute exercise. Not so much for your hamstrings. And this leads to the second exercise, which is the good morning. And I was originally going to say the RDL because they're basically they're the same movement patterns, but with RDLs, you can't superset them together well, unless you also have access to a deadlift platform, like right next to you, and you're also using a squat rack. Eh, in a crowded gym, I don't think that's gonna fly. You can do them sequentially though, which I've done in the past, and it's still great. Although the actual loading can get pretty high. And I recognize that, you know, the good morning was pretty much shat on, what it was shit on, a lot in the past. And at least in the past, I kind of agreed in the way that I didn't really go out of my way to do it, right? Until, until honestly, Al Alpha Destiny or Alex Leonidas recommended it. And I was like, okay, sure, fine. He said to do it. And then I tried it, and I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty good. So, it's a really good exercise because it does certain things that the RDL doesn't. For one, it takes a lot less stress off your lower back. It uses a lot less weight than an RDL, which for your general fatigue, that is really good. In addition, there's no like grip requirements needed because the bars on your back, right? You don't need to grip anything. Unlike an RDL where you like, you know, if you go like, if you get heavy enough, you don't need straps. And personally, I was like struggling with my RDLs because of my grip. Like they were the limiting factor, even though I was trying to target my hamstrings. And what was worse was that, you know, there'd be these times where I'm just like stubborn being, there were these times where I was just being stubborn and not wanting to use straps. So I would just use hook grip. And that, that was, that was painful. <laughs> Cause like, it's, it's like, it's not like with powerlifting where like you do hook grip. All right, and then you lift it up once, maybe twice, maybe do triple triples, maybe do a set of five. But like, 
I thought he yells, you're gonna do the stuff for like, so it's 12, 15, it's a long ass time, it's like 40 seconds to a minute, like, holding hook grip for like that long, bro, that shit hurts, anyway, the reason why people thought the good morning was like really bad was because of the actual loading, right, because if you look at it, it's like, you have a bar on your back, and then your back is going to be almost flat, well, not really, it's, it's going to be angled, it's going to be angled, you can just kind of see like how the lower back is more stressed. But the thing is, you don't use nearly as much weight as you do in RDL. So in terms of sheer weight on your spine, it's not that much. And this is due to leverages. And because the bar is on your further up your body, you don't need nearly as much weight to get the same effect. And probably you're going to have the weight of your RDLs compared to your <clears throat> good mornings. And like almost every exercise, like if you do it correctly, it's... There's really no chance of injury unless, like, an accident happens. <clears throat> if you do it incorrectly, like, yeah, things are going to happen. Like, you're going to you're gonna injure yourself. But it's like bench press, bro. Like, you can you will injure yourself if you do it wrong. You will injure yourself if you do a bicep curl wrong. And believe me, a lot of people do curls wrong. A lot of people do. I mean, you can really mess up anything. So it's not just the good morning. With proper form, the good morning is, in my opinion... One of the best leg exercises that you can possibly do. So realistically, you're going to have more exercises to do for your legs. I hope. Than just two. I hope. Don't only do these. Right? Your leg days, you should have more exercises, but not too many. Your leg days should not be like your upper body days. Like, your upper body days should be like a shopping list. Like, do, 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 like eight, maybe ten exercises. Of course, if you split that up into, like, push and pull, it's going to be less for each day. But, like, it's still, like, there's a lot of exercises for your upper body because your upper body has so many different muscle groups <clears throat> as compared to your legs. All right, your legs got, like, four or five right, quads, hamstrings, glutes, adductors, calves. The, those are, like, the biggest ones. Like, your upper body day should be, like, shopping with a woman. All right, it's, it's a lot of stuff. Your leg days should be shopping on your own. Right? Just, just list like, I need this, 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 this. Right? And you just get those. Done. Nothing more, nothing less. It's much less than your upper body days. Personally, four exercises is like pretty much all you need for your lower body. That's enough for a workout. <clears throat> all right, six if you really want to push it. Like you don't need three exercises per muscle in your lower body. That's going to just kill yourself. You're gonna overwork your legs. And then come the next time you do legs, you're going to still be sore. And then you're going to be like, why are they sore? Well, I don't know. Maybe because you did like three exercises for your quads and, and your hamstrings and your glutes and your calves. Maybe that's why. I'm pushing this minimalistic approach to leg training because th this entire video is for beginners and intermediates. Now, if you're advanced, like I said, you know what's good for you. You know what to do. For beginners and intermediates, you need more guidance. And a minimalistic approach to leg training will do your wonders, at least for now. So when I say four exercises, you, you know, if you do this duo, there's still two more slots. Like, what am I going to do? All right, what do you add? I'd add another quad movement, <clears throat> another adductor movement, or a hamstring movement. And if you really want to go crazy, add calves. All right, that'll be six total, right? Squats, good mornings, quad isolation, hopefully, um, adductors, uh, adductor isolation, hamstring isolation, calves, six, done. An extreme minimalistic approach is just the squats, good morning, adductors, calves, or if you just don't even do calves, just don't even do calves and maybe do quad isolation. And I add adductors because they are extremely important for big legs. They're, they compose your inner thigh and are like a massive chunk of your legs like it's i wouldn't say it's comparable for, to your quads but like it's it's pretty damn big like it's pretty damn big and, and they will enhance your legs so to conclude when do you do this combo right when do you do these two exercises this pair at the start of your workout when you're the most fresh right because the squat should be your most systemically fatiguing exercise 
It should not be like your second or third exercise. Your squat should be your main priority exercise, and therefore it should be first. It should be first. It should be the first exercise that you do in a leg workout, and therefore you do this combo first in your leg workout. Because if you have a compromised or stressed lower back already, you are going to be in a precarious situation if you squat. Like if your lower back is already like fatigued, and then you do squats, you are at more risk of injuring yourself, of getting a herniated disc, and you do not want that. Try this pair out. Right. Beginning of the workout, right. do these two exercises, and then add on whatever exercise you want, four to six total exercises. Right. That'll be it for your legs. Right. Leg training is supposed to be simple. It's not supposed to be complex. Right. Your leg training is supposed to be simple and straight to the point.